Good morning, mobile teacher here, Steve Cameron, and uh, just meditating on the Word of God this morning before my first pickup. And I'm in Spurgeon's morning and evening devotions and his morning devotion, and he's in Judges 7:20. Judges 7:20, and he says, "The sword of the Lord." He quotes from Scripture, "The sword of the Lord." and of Gideon. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. This is when Gideon and his armies um, had the pitcher uh, covering the torch. And then they had to break the pitcher. And they came with the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Um, Judges 7.20. The book of Judges is a great book. Um, we will find that we have a sword that belongs to God. It, it is the sword of the Lord. But he allows us to say, it is our sword also. The word of the Lord is the sword. It is the armor, part of our uh, spiritual armor that is the weapon. That is not just for protection, but for slicing and dicing um, the Bible says the bone and the marrow, slicing the soul and the spirit, convicting the heart, um, and causing the enemy to flee many times. Um, the enemy does know the word of the Lord backwards and forwards, but when we know, see, when we know the word of the Lord, that it comes from God, that its power is filled with God, then we're wielding a sword that God has given us. And so we can truly say, you know, but the word of the Lord says. And because we're holding his sword, God allows us to be partakers in that sword. So that we can truly say like Gideon, it is the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Um, but before we can really fully use the word of the Lord in our lives, we've got to break the pitcher. We've got to break the vessel that's over the light. We've got to break that flesh up. We've got to get inside to the Spirit of God, working with our spirit, guiding us in all truth and in all love so that the fruit of the Spirit can shine, so that it can shine. You know, many times we feel like the word of the Lord should pierce. Yes, it does. It says it does pierce. The sword of the Lord pierces, but the sword of the Lord also shines when the sun shines on its metal. When the sun shines on its metal. You see, the sword of the word of the Lord in me, in you, has God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself, as the scriptures all allude to from the beginning to the end. The sword has that shining light of holiness, of perfect righteousness, of goodness, of mercy, of grace, of power, of even of judgment. But it's 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 not our sword only so that when we go out, we say, look, I'm coming at you with this sword. This is my sword. I'm attacking you. That didn't work with Peter. Peter cut off the uh, soldier's ear and Jesus put it right back and healed it and said, this is this is not what we're doing. He who lives by that kind of sword dies by that kind of sword. That sword that we think we wield on our own and belongs to us so that we can uh, do what we will. The sword that we hold is, a, is God's sword. And, and that is for His will. For His will. And so we don't just go out haphazardly with the Word of God. But we go out in wisdom, in knowledge, in love and determining what to do with that sword by how God is telling us to use the sword each time we are to use it. And God will let you know what word. He will bring the scriptures to memory, to your memory, so that you will know what to say in the right time. So wield the Lord's sword. Enjoy and be glad that you can call it his sword and your sword. But remember, it's only your sword because it's God's sword who gave it to you. And may the sun shine on that sword and on the sword bearer as well. 
Till next time, may the Lord richly bless you. Mobile Teacher.